We have wrapped up all the transits, but what I'm really excited about showing you is this. We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. Hey everybody, it's Brian with Team Aquaski. We've got a full, full week for you. We're finishing up the last of our academies. Like, whew, right? No, they were so much fun, but yes, we're finishing up the last of our academies. We're also getting ready, really kind of dive into maintenance. Chris and the team have been working tirelessly to get everything prepped and ready. I want to share with you guys all the behind the scenes stuff that it takes to do over 300 clean outs in an entire season. I'm actually guessing we're going to be someplace around 400 clean outs this year. I also want to take you back over to the whiteboard. You guys remember the whiteboard, the thing that's keeping track of all of our different maintenance packages, our diamond, platinum, gold, our silver, our bronze, and how many total clean outs we're at at this point. So I want to take you over there, show you some of the behind the scenes stuff, really how we organize all these clean outs and get them done efficiently. But I thought while we were sitting here in one of my favorite places in all of Aqualand, we check in on some of those fish. All those Japanese koi came in last week and they're doing fantastic. I've got so many favorites. I thought I'd just show you some of my favorites and what they look like and how they're doing. You guys remember way back when we were building all this stuff, we got all of our nets on here so they don't jump over. Our aerators are tied right to the net. Can't see them really well because of the aeration. Now I can see them better. Got my little kickstand here. Now we can come in and bowl some of these up. So we just take this, get a little bit of water in here. And we've got dedicated bowls for dedicated tanks. We also have dedicated nets for dedicated tanks. Making sure we don't cross contaminate anything. But there's a Tancho Kojaku and I think he's just amazing. That's this guy right here. And what I'm really trying to do right now as I bring him over here is try to avoid as much contact as possible. And I really just want to kind of bring him Corral them over into the bowl. Now look at that guy. So that's a Tancho Kajaku. And look at the yellow on that head. Like that's a yellow I've just not seen anywhere before. And then look at the netting pattern on the scales. Like it's just a beautiful fish. And this fish is gonna get considerably larger. I would love to have them in my pond. I would love to have all these fish in my pond. And at some point you just have to say enough's enough. So this guy's ready for sale. Make sure if you're ever out here, you come check him out. I've got another really cool fish in here. This is a Shiru Utsuri Ginrin. And the Ginrin means spark scales. What I want you to see is the cool pattern on his head. Same thing, I just kind of bring this over here. Uh, look at that fish. So the Ginrin is the sparkly scales. And I don't know if the camera picks that up, but those sparkly scales really, really pop when it's outside in your pond. And then notice the clear separation between the black and the white. This is a really, really nice fish. And then I love the little black hook on his head there. In fact, I think we'll call him Captain Hook. Mm -hmm. We'll go check in on him maybe in a month or so. Or I'm hoping in a month or so he's gone and he's gone to somebody else's pond. Now let me show you some of my favorite over in this tank. I've got one more I have to show you just because I think it's so cool. It's a Doi to Ochiba. Now, I know beauty's in the eye of the beholder, but I think these Ochiba fish are just so awesome. Doitsu means scaleless. They tend to be my favorite, almost my go-tos, because when they don't have the scales, the colors seem to pop a little bit more on them. Two of them in here, but one of them I really, really, actually I can't choose which one I like better, so I'll just net them both up. You guys tell me which one you like better. Woo! I got wet. <laughs> now I just learned this too. You want to handle fish. The idea, bring the fish towards you. Keep your hands wet. That'll reduce the amount of slime coat you take off of them. Bring his head always towards you. Come here, fella. There we go. I don't know why I like these fish so much. The brown is unusual. I think the brown against the gray is just something you don't see all the time. I really like this guy a lot. There used to be more of a black outline on his brown. Black is kind of going away, but this guy's cool because he's got the diamond on there. Maybe we should call him Diamond Package because we're talking about maintenance. <laughs> I do know this. We're not supposed to name them because if we name them, we're never ever going to want to get rid of them. But these are two of my favorite in here. But how do you choose? There's some Kikasui in there. There's a Tanchu Kikasui down there. There's there's another Utsuri back over there. It's kind of a gray. There's so many awesome fish. But tell me which ones of these you guys like best. All right, guys. So you guys keep watching because we have so much to show you. We got all that behind the scenes stuff that Chris has been working on. We've got all the behind the scenes stuff that happens in the office. You guys want to learn more about this. Make sure you watch all the way to the end. Let's go.
my god. What a day. <laughs> we have all these calls coming in for maintenance. Greg is coming in. He said he's gonna be here in like five minutes. I know it's driving him absolutely insane not to see the fish that just came in from Japan. And I think I heard his mom in the back of the car. The pond guy and the pond mom coming in. These doors any second. And I can't wait to see Greg and whether he remembers which fish he bought. Is he excited about it? Which ones is he gonna allow me to sell? Because remember, at the end of the day, we should be selling these things. Time to think he's gonna say, no, I wanna keep that one. I wanna keep this one. I wanna keep all of them, but we'll see. Welcome home. Feels good. I feel like a kid on Christmas coming to see these fish. <laughs> the last time Pond Mom saw them, they were in Japan. Yep. Right, I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome, man. They look so happy. It looks like they've always been here. <laughs> Where is my silver one that I got for Utah? So this fish is unique. I like unique koi. All koi are beautiful, but this one is the one that I picked out for my personal home in Utah. Is it just so unique? There it is. So fun to go to Japan and then have these fish go all the way to New Jersey, then drive all the way over to Chicago and they look healthy and happy and they've been quarantined so it looks great. I feel like a kid in a candy store. Jack, pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah. Good work on the pond and the fish have a happy new home and hopefully the filters with Brian's bio balls works just great. Hey, so Greg, somebody commented on wetland video we just yeah. did yeah. and they really wanted to know how you felt about $13,000 in bio balls. And well, did you realize that was just for one filter? <laughs> No! <laughs> yeah. Twenty six thousand. Well, it's completely over. You don't pay full retail, though. I got you a good price. On it. Okay. <laughs> Did we even have enough in supply? We took all of them. Oh, God. Great. So now we have no bio balls. Well, stuff. I think it's, it's a good problem. I think it's insane. <laughs> but you know what? I stick by my words. This is, especially when it gets done. This will be the nicest fish retailing system anywhere that I've seen in the world. If you've seen another nicer fish retailing system for koi in the world, put a link to it because I would love to see it. Good job. Huh? Big raise for this guy. <laughs> so this is exciting because I'm walking past the construction office and I see Haley actually updating the board for maintenance. Haley, this is perfect. Hello. You're updating. I come by here at least twice a week and just kind of see what's going on. You can see all the different packages in here. Obviously the most popular package is that platinum package. So a platinum package or any package includes a spring clean out, which is a full drain the pond, power wash it, take your fish out, put your fish back in. All the packages include that stuff. So whether you get a diamond, a platinum, a gold, a silver, or a bronze, you're getting that package. The only difference is how often do we come out. This is once a week, this is once every two weeks, once a month, this is just clean out in the fall shutdown. Mm -hmm. This with is the netting. with the netting. This is a spring clean out and we pull your pump, not a whole fall shutdown. The number I really pay attention to are the ones that it looks like she's filling in right now. It is March 22nd, so we have 307 clean outs at almost $780,000 in revenue. So that's pretty good, Haley. The only thing I I'm worried about is our goal is 1.6. Now, I keep saying 1.6. They say 1.4. 1.4. I say 1.6 because I'm a little bit more optimistic. In the back of my mind, and you should put it in the back of your mind, 1.6 feels better, uh -huh. right? So if we can say 1.6, then maybe we'll hit 1.4. If we say 1.4, maybe we only get to 1.2. Mm -hmm. See what I'm doing? Yeah. Right? Like half full. Two for the stars. <laughs> Two for the, the stars. Yeah. That's it. So if it's March 22nd and we're only at 307 and we're at 780, I think that number by the time we're done with cleanouts needs to be closer to 900 in order for us to get to our 1.6 million. This might sound confusing to you guys, but part of maintenance too is not just the cleanouts and the weekly service and the bi-weekly service. It's also fix it, replacing pumps, upsells, enhancements. It's small construction. Like uh, I think Josh and Chris are going on to do a consultation soon. Yeah, for a a waterfall rehab. Somebody just wants a facelift on a waterfall, kind of give it a new updated look. Little things like that start adding up too. So a waterfall rehab could be someplace around five, six thousand, mm -hmm. rather than redoing your whole pond, which could be twenty to thirty thousand. So we really rely on some of those things as well. We need to figure out how we get that to nine hundred. Mm -hmm. I think the next step would be instead of being reactive, be a little bit more proactive. We'll probably go through all of our past cleanouts and see who hasn't signed up yet. So we need to be proactive, try to call those people, because we need roughly about another fifty, six. 
60 some clean outs to get that number up to where we're at. You've already called some of those people before. Mm -hmm. The challenge is, is you call the person and you get an answering machine, yeah. right? So how often do we have to call people in order for them to really say, hey, yes, we either want to do it or don't want to do it? I want to say that I go back every two weeks. So we've started the phone calls since we started the email. So sometimes it takes like the third phone call before we talk to them and they're like, oh my gosh, yes, we need to sign up for that. Sometimes it takes longer. So we just want to keep reaching out, keep being on their radar. We would love to say that everybody just calls us and there's no work. Like we just wait for everybody to call. If we want to get that number to 1.6, we have to go after it, go after it. We look at all the pond enhancement opportunities, which is what the guys are going to do when they start doing clean outs. Look at all the different possibilities we'll get into soon enough here. So they need to track all that. Who needs lights? Who else could use a waterfall enhancement? Who could use a pond enhancement? We don't even have to rip the whole pond out, do an enhancement. We could just add some big, large boulders here or there to kind of spruce it up. Updates on filters. Some people have old biofalls, old skimmers. New skimmers are so much easier to maintain and clean. Like these are all possibilities to help grow that number. Right now though, like we've said, it's March 22nd. So it's Wednesday? Yes. Today's Wednesday. Next Monday, we're like going, yes. right? Haley, where are we at right now with like how many working hours? Where does it put us? Do you know that information? Not completely <laughs> until we start scheduling, but we're probably looking at like the first or second week of May. So do me a favor. If we could actually look at your spreadsheet, we're going to come back and visit. Like I want to know exactly where we're at. You need to tell me that we're May 2nd, we're May 7th, we're May 15th. I mm -hmm. need to know that number because whenever cleanouts are done, then we start construction. Yeah. And I would love to know like we're starting construction the third week of May or something, or are we all the way into June? Mm -hmm. So if you could give me that okay. number, we'll be back in like a half an hour or something. Okay. This would be a perfect time to go check in on the academy attendees. Told you there was a bunch of academy stuff going on. And Chris has been working diligently with the rest of Team Aquascape, getting all of the vans and trucks and power washers and everything else ready. So let's go check in with those guys. And we'll come back in a little bit and check on Haley to see where that magic date falls. Yeah, this is our last week of academy. All right, so this is the seventh and eighth academies. We have four advanced academies that Ed the Pond Professor did a great job and you oh. supported, I supported. Yep. And then there's four standard academies, which I do and Brian does. The Don't X's forget and Chris, and Chris, Chris and Jack. Okay, and the rest of the team absolutely. Of the classroom right? portions we do, yep. the hands on portions where those guys are actually. We have in. the hard part. You know, we gotta keep contractors entertained, sitting in seats. Those guys get to build a water feature. It looks fantastic. So the whole point of this is to get people baptized into the aquascape methodologies, the systems, the processes, the procedures. So people come from all over. We got people from England here, Utah, where I'm from, people from New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Indiana, Seattle. Atlanta, <laughs> Seattle, Washington. So we do this every winter in the off season to get people excited for the new season. I got one question. Yeah. First, breathe. All right, good, good. <laughs> What's the biggest difference you see with this academy versus the Advanced Academy with people yep. that are attending. Well, the Advanced Academy, really, mostly the people that are coming are certified oxygen contractors already, and they're trying to take their design game, the insulation game, their advanced techniques to the next level. This is the X's and O's. This is the blocking tackling. How to be successful with water features, how to make money in the water feature game. For me, it's so, like, nostalgic. It brings me back to, like, very first build-a-pond days and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And we've got a brand new group of people. Like, a lot of these guys haven't built two ponds oh my gosh. or three ponds. And you see the light bulbs go off in their head, which you don't see in Ed's class because they're coming in there for like the trigonometry type stuff. Like they've been there, done this, been in the trenches. You guys are looking forward to getting in the trenches. There's people here that have never built a water feature, which is fantastic. That's actually the best That's way the to best do part it. About you it. have to watch them build a water feature, the 20 products and the 20 steps. So everything that Aquascape has been doing now for 32 years, we teach you in a two day experience, immerse into the Aquascape systems, methodologies and processes. I love it and this is why I say I love my job. New people getting into this business, this is what it's all about. So this is gonna be a full week. So it's Monday night. We've got Chris doing his hands-on class tomorrow. We're up on Wednesday. As soon as the 50, 60 people from Wednesday, 100, people. 100 plus people come in Wednesday night, and then we get to chaperone them Thursday and Friday, which we're doing back to back to back to back. We're building three ponds this week. Three ponds in one week with a crew of four guys. It's a good week. It's going to be a lot, but it's going to be fun, and the energy of these guys is what keeps us going. Hey, who's ready for a tour? All right, come on, let's go. Let's go.
What is up, everybody? We are back. Come here, come here, come, come, come. All right, Josh, we have an enormous amount of work. Today, we are going to be working on spring clean out prep, Correct. which is always an enormous amount of work. Correct. I don't think people really realize how much effort and energy actually goes into this. I mean, it's weeks, sometimes months of preparation, right? It starts all the way back, sending out the estimates for spring clean outs, taking in the money, getting all that stuff. So we know how much revenue we're generating from spring clean outs, which in turn really gives us direction on how we need to prepare for it, right? Yep. So understand guys and girls, this is not just starting today. This prep has started months and months ago. Fortunately for us, Josh has been here 23 oh, years, 21 years. He's been here over two decades and has, sounds like a really yeah, long time, yeah. doesn't it? I feel like I'm gray or something. <laughs> You're confused because I don't see it. I don't see it at all. But Josh, over the last 20 years, you've really been the one constant in our service department. Year in and year out, you've really continued to refine how we get ready for spring clean out season. It started basically as almost just you, maybe plus one or plus two, but ideally it was me. That's, you know, the whole reason I came on was they started a maintenance department at that time. So it was just me going out by myself, doing fix its, doing maintenance packages. Probably back at that time, we only had about five or six. And then it basically grown into what it is now. We got five service vehicles. We're at about three quarters of a million dollars in maintenance packages alone. Over the years, it's just, it's grown. It has grown. And I think what's cool too is through the growth that Josh has seen firsthand, and I've only been here for the last half of that, to see it grow, we've really poured a lot of effort and energy into really refining our processes, but also focusing on the organization. So today, we're gonna kind of go through all of our trucks, uh, make sure that we have all of the spring clean out kits, as we call them and just make sure that we can hit the ground running when that weather finally breaks and we can get out yep. in people's backyards, right? So yep. understand that we're going off of years and years and years of history and experience that have gotten us to this point. But like Josh said, this is over three quarters of a million dollars in revenue that we're really getting ourselves ready for. So this is a big, big deal. Should we go ahead and get started? I think you already have a couple trucks put together. I think what, Levi over here, right? We're gonna move his truck in. So Levi, you've got your truck, you ready to pull it in? Oh yeah. All right, let's go. And then Josh lets you and I, will talk about what goes into the kits, what you're looking for, and that kind kind of stuff. All right, so when we're talking maintenance service vehicles, you guys have seen them before on our videos. This is one of the Ford Transits, and this is Levi's truck, and we're gonna go ahead and get this thing outfitted for spring cleanouts. Woo! As oh, yeah. you can see, this thing is very bare. Let's see what the back looks like, huh? So, that doesn't look like a spring cleanout vehicle. Nope. <laughs> and why not? So part of the process that we do starts at the end of the year, the prior year. When we get done for the season, we bring the trucks in and we actually unload a bunch of stuff. And we take a lot of the liquid stuff out. We do an inventory on what our current inventory is on there. What he has going on right now in his truck is he was set up for doing winter maintenance. You know, that, that would be the reason why he's got some of these used up de-icers, aerators, that kind of stuff. Those are the key elements in helping keep holes open in people's ponds here in our climate as things freeze, right? That's also the reason why we take all of the consumable water treatments, the liquid water treatments out so that, that doesn't freeze. So it's bare bones for winter service. And Levi is going ahead and putting all those kind of perishable items back in his truck that were removed originally. But Josh is out here. Josh, we'll tell our viewers a little bit more about what's going on here. This is additional product that we ordered over the winter to put back into the trucks. We did an inventory at the end of the season to see what was left in the trucks. We we took that inventory and then figured out what else we needed to add to the inventory to put back into the truck. So this is for Levi's truck. We got a couple orders over there that are for a couple different trucks. We're gonna take this, essentially fill it with everything that we would need for him to go out and hit the road tomorrow and start doing spring Ideally, cleanouts. Yes. And we're gonna get into that here in a little bit as to why we're outfitting the trucks the way that we are. Stay tuned, we're gonna go ahead and get a time lapse set up. We will be right back as we start to pull this truck apart and get it outfitted for spring cleanout season. So you can see it's not just like flip a switch and we go start doing clean outs. There's a lot of stuff that has to happen. Chris took you through kind of an orientation of what goes in behind the scenes and what it takes to get ready for 350 to 400 some clean outs. It's a lot, a lot of work. And if we're not prepped and ready, then we start off really slow. We're back here. Haley told them we'd come back. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Look at him. 
This is why Haley's job is so important. There's no way I have the skill set to do what she's doing right now. The reason she drops all those in there, well, you tell them why you drop them all in there. It's the easiest way to know these cleanouts should be done together. So we want all of our crews in the same area. That way, if they run into any problems, they get done early, they can help each other out. So Haley, I asked you to get together kind of a the most accurate forecast on when you think we'll finish cleanouts based off of the 307 number up there. Where are you at right now? So we have approximately five crews and each crew can do approximately two and a half clean outs a day. Okay. So with that, we're looking at end of the first week of May. That's good. So if we're finishing up end of the first week of May, we actually forecast start construction June 1st. Literally every year we forecast to start construction someplace in the middle of May. And every year we say we still have this many more clean outs to do, this many more clean outs. And so it just becomes this battle. How do we pull construction guys away? How do we still keep our maintenance customers happy? To me, that means we still have three weeks open yeah. to try to get that number closer to 350, 400. Yeah. And if we can do with five crews at two and a half a day, what's the math? In one day, 12 and a half. 12 and a half. And we have five days in a week. 62 and a half. 62 and a half a week. And we got three weeks. So 62 and a half times three. 187. We can do 187 more clean outs. <laughs> <laughs> if they're small, yes. which is we have to take that number and cut it down because some of these cleanouts are full day cleanouts where we have two crews cleaning a pond for an entire day. Some of these cleanouts are two crews cleaning a pond for half a day and then they split up. They don't always just look at the cleanouts per day number though. Mm -hmm. They don't always follow that. So paying attention more to our man hours of cleanouts. That's so, so important. So right now we're at 2,800. We were expecting like 3,000. We've still got like 200 hours of cleanouts we can do. So there's a lots of logistical stuff going on. That's why you're in the driver's seat here. You figure out which crew goes where. The other challenge we had this year is leads. We've got a lot of new guys, five new guys helping us with some help from CACs. Those guys cannot be leads. Our customers want familiar faces, know that they're being taken care of and everything else. Nothing against the new guys, but it'll take them some time before they're ready to be a lead. So we take five experienced guys, put them with five new guys, and then we can go. Hopefully some of the newer guys step it up and they can be leads leads halfway through and then we can bring in more people and try to whittle that number down faster. You can see this isn't just like let's go do cleanouts and it's fun. There's a lot of logistical stuff that happens between all the stuff that Chris and the rest of Team Aquascape were doing, between the stuff that Haley was doing. You're on the phone, you gotta call another hundred people-ish to fill that schedule. As you guys are getting into this business and you're looking to kind of grow this, keep track of the man hours it takes to clean a pond. We've been keeping track of our man hours to clean these different ponds for the last six years so we have very good accurate measurement that's why you can say we're at 2800 because you've looked at all of the years in the past and we might be able to fudge it a little bit more because bringing on another team is a real possibility Gross, Dude, that number. you are killing it you guys it takes so much work to get this done hopefully this was educational for you if you guys have any other questions put them down in the comments below we're here to help you and we want to make sure you guys are successful hey and if you need a clean out give Haley a call <laughs>so we have wrapped up all the transits we got my transit behind me and the guys right now are working on doing the oil changes on the pressure washers that are going to go on the trucks want to just kind of show you what happened with these trucks so as we said earlier in the video we basically have a mobile retail store so in here we've got things like fish food we got our premium cold water our color enhancing our premium staple we have our water treatments all very nicely organized all the lighting essentials that will help us and then we have just kind of a variety of stuff we've got a lighting kit down here as well as a bunch of hand tools down below one thing that we really talk about a lot is organization things like own dedicated bag for seaming this has primer cover tape three inch tape some scour pads brushes to apply the primer but what i'm really excited about showing you there you have it that is a truck minus the pressure washer we're gonna leave those out for a second we'll go right along this open space here but we've got our clean out pumps fuel for our different pieces of equipment can of gas for pressure washer mixed fuel 
handle for my little handheld blower, which is up there. Buckets, which we use a lot while we're picking debris, that kind of stuff. Got our hand tools, all nice and secured using bungee straps. And then we have our collapsible 500 gallon tanks. Each truck's gonna have two of them on here. We have pressure washer hose. We've got garden hoses. We've got a 50 footer and a 75 footer on here. And then we'll have four clean out hoses as well. These are awesome because you can connect them and you can run 50 feet. You can connect them to make 100, 150, 200, or you can run two 100 foot pieces. Really whatever works. We've got our nets that we use to catch fish, but also pull debris out. Back here we have our soft nets, which are used for taking care and transporting our larger fish. While we're talking about fish health and organization, another thing that we have in here as well, we have a kit that has all of the things that we would need. Pro Air 60, a couple diffusers in here. We also have a Pro Air 20 that has the smaller air stones for us to give fish supplemental oxygen while they're in the holding tanks. We've got, going back to the whole mobile retail store, a bunch of replacement pumps up on the top level, back over there. We've got a fitting center. I actually prefer to go large to small. So I have, we got a three inch check valve, three inch fittings, two inch fittings, inch and a half fittings, miscellaneous check valve fittings in there. And then the very bottom are just a bunch of like those goofy three quarter, one inch kind of stuff. So really, really pleased with how organized this entire truck is. I have all of my lights up in here. So I have my standard white lights, my color changing lights over here and then I've got a bunch of other additional stuff dosing systems XT's couple extra pumps an extra pro rare 60 but just all the fixings in here got my toolbox back in there has all my power tools but I love it's very very clean streamlined organized very well labeled we have everything that we would possibly need in here so I'm just really really pleased with how this turned out again giving you another look and all of the trucks have been outfitted this way so you're probably asking why the heck do you have all these pool noodle looking things well these these are actually a pool noodle that we just cut into pieces. That will help hold the net that goes over the top of these collapsible tanks along this square frame all along the side. So rather than us going in there and clamping them, tying them down that way. So really, really pleased with how that's turning out. Um, and then this is kind of the last piece before these trucks go out and hit the road, getting all of the pressure washers ready to go. Right? Giving them a once over, cleaning them, making sure that all of the quick connect fittings that go to the hoses are all functioning and not leaking. So we are in the home stretch and this is awesome because tomorrow we are going to be putting our money where our mouth is, if you will, and putting all this stuff to the test and going out and actually doing clean outs at some of our teammates' homes that have aquascape ponds practice, knock the rust off. A lot of work has went into this to get it to this point. We are so pleased that we hit our deadline of having everything ready at the end of today. So if you thought this week was crazy, wait till next week where we take you further down that rabbit hole of clean outs, show you how to actually clean a pond, take you through our pre-customer phone calls that we do the day before and then even more importantly follow me all the way across the pond to the uk where i will be judging a waterfall competition you'll probably also see a lot more waterfalls you guys i'm so excited to go over to the uk because there's some incredible pond builders over there that i want to introduce you to and show you their super talented work over there hey follow me along as we judge a waterfall competition it'll be worth your time have a great week and we'll see you next sunday bye